In the last video, you learn about how you can save a particular store to the Firebase or Firestore database. But right now, whenever we save something, we are not able to display it. We are not able to see those items on the UI. So what we want to do in this video is to fetch all the stores from the Firestore database and display it on our UI. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and create a new function and I will call it get all stores. Now this particular function is going to get all the stores from the Firestore database. db.collection, which collection are we talking about? Well, we use the stores collection. So we are interested in getting all the stores from the stores collection. Dot get documents. The get documents is going to fire a completion handler and it's going to give you a snapshot or a closure which will contain a snapshot and an error. So a snapshot and an error. Now what exactly is this snapshot? Well snapshot basically contains, depending on what you're calling, it will contain a snapshot of the items meaning what the Firestore database holds at that particular moment. So if we go back to our Firestore database, we can see that at this particular moment, there are three records, three documents in the grocery app stores collection. So since we are calling get documents, we are going to get all these three documents. So let's go ahead and first of all, check for the error. If let error equals to error, so if there is any error, we're going to unwrap it and we can go ahead and simply print out the error. We're not really doing much, just printing out the error. Else, if there is no error, in that case, we will go ahead and unwrap the snapshot. So if let snapshot equals to snapshot, we will unwrap it. Once we have the snapshot unwrap, one of the properties of snapshot is documents. So this is going to give you all the different documents. Now you can perform a map on it or you can perform a filter on it. I'm going to go ahead and perform a compact map, which means that it is going to ignore the nil item, the null items. So compact map. We're going to get the document. And what we can do is call document.data and you can see one of the overloads of the function data is like as, where you can pass in the decodable protocol, meaning you can pass in the name of the class that you are trying to convert it to. So store.self. And this is going to give us a particular store. Now, once we have this particular store, and let's see, let's go over here and make sure that we are calling this with try question mark or try optional because this can actually blow up. So if it does blow up, we are going to get nil instead of just completely crashing our app. If you use a try exclamation mark, this is basically forcing and this can actually blow up. So if there is something that is not converted to store.self class, then it's just going to blow up. We don't really want that to happen. So we're just going to use try optional. And now I can finally return the store. Now, right now it is telling us over here that, well, we don't really know what you're assigning it to. So let stores equals to all of this stuff. Now, what exactly is stores? And we don't really need a let over here, I guess. So stores will be a public array of items, array of stores. I'm going to go ahead and create a state. I will call it stores, which will be an array of stores initialized as an empty array. Now keep that in mind that right now we are simply trying to work with Firestore database. In an actual app, I would not create this as a state property. I would probably put it inside a view model and I would use the observable property or a published property which can be observed. So just to show you that what we can do with the Firestore, 
I'm just trying to create this as a store property so we can just use the fired store and see all the things happening. Now the compact map is going to return you a list of stores and I'm going to assign it to the stores. Now since the stores is marked with pup, uh, the state, this means that whenever the state is updated, it is going to re-render the view. And that is our opportunity to go ahead and update the view. So I'm going to go over here and create a list of stores ID. Unfortunately, we don't really have any distinguished ID for the stores. So if you look at the store, we can simply use a name for now, but that's not a really good practice. I mean, in the end, you'll see that we will end up using some sort of a store ID. But right now, we don't have it. Name is fine for now. We will get the store and we can use a text view to display the store dot name. Let's go ahead and run the application and see if it displays our stores or not. Once the preview is ready, I'm going to go ahead and play. And currently we see nothing. Well, the reason is that we, although created this function call get all stores, we never really called it. So let's go ahead and see how we can call it. So let's go back over here. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to implement the on appear. And inside on appear, we can say, or we can call the function name, which is get all stores. Get all stores. And now let's go ahead and resume it. And let's go ahead and run it again. And now we see the stores. This is awesome, right? I mean, these are the three stores that we had in our Firebase. You can see Walmart, HEB, and Randalls. We have Walmart, HEB, and Randalls. Let's go ahead and add another store. So I'm going to go ahead and say Costco. Probably I misspelled that, so I'm just going to say Fiesta. Save store. Well, it doesn't really display it over here but we can see Fiesta is right over here. So what we want to do is when you actually add a store, we want to again call get all stores to fetch all the stores. So let's go ahead and go to the function where we are adding a store. And in the else block, when the document is actually saved, we can go ahead and call get all stores. Let's go ahead and resume it and run our application. And you can see Fiesta is being displayed, but let's go ahead and add something. So I'm going to say Albertsons, and we got Albertsons. And if you add something else, let's say Sam's Club, we got Sam's Club, and so on. And obviously all this data is also stored on our Firebase Firestore. Great, right? So we were able to set up the Firebase, we were able to create or add a new store, and we were able to display the stores. The next step that we want to take is to delete a particular store. And that is what we're gonna cover in the next video. If you want to support my channel, then the best way would be to become a patron. You can simply go to patreon.com slash Sharp. The videos that you're looking at right now, which is for a grocery app, I will be adding a lot more videos, but those will be available only to patrons. So make sure that you sign up. You can see that there are multiple tiers, a silver tier for $5 a month, or a gold tier for $10 a month. You can sign up for either of these tiers. If you sign up for gold tier, you will get a little bit more information and publications, discounts and coupons, and well, you will be able to help me out much more. Apart from that, you can always go and search my courses. My courses links are actually in YouTube description where you can find all of my courses. You can see that I'm reaching close to 50,000 students. And I have many different courses on SIF UI, MVVM design pattern, even the Redux design pattern, uh, RX Swift, Combine, Composable, SIF UI architecture. This just got released. 
couple of uh, days ago. So if you haven't watched it, go ahead and get this course. It's completely different from Surf UI with NVVM pattern. This is a completely different pattern. If you are interested in server-side, then I have a server-side surf using Vapor, and I even have courses on Flutter. So these are the best ways to support my work. Once again, thank you so much for your continuous support, and I really hope that you enjoy the video.